All right, so we're going to begin this segment off with um, an article that appeared in Risk Media, um, and it was a Zillow report that they actually came out with. So I'm going to read a little excerpts from this and give a little bit of commentary as well as Jane, and we'll just kind of discuss this real quick. But in the article by Risk Media, they said something interesting that provides some more insight into home shortages. Um, the current market, and this is, what they, this is what they said in the article, Jane, they said the current market environment has increased demand for housing. And that may not be going away for a while. And according to a new Zillow report, low rates of household formation since the Great Recession have caused 5.7 million, and there are quotes, missing households. These households represented people who historically would have moved into their own home, but have been unable to do so. And so the market is still catching up to these gaps. And it went on to say this could point to a changing trends as fewer Americans across all age groups and ethnicities are forming households instead of continuing to live with their parents into adulthood or renting with roommates and or partners. So that's kind of what that article said. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think with our first time home buyers, we've had a lot of them that want to purchase a home right now, but they're unable to find them. And the prices of the homes that they typically would start looking at are just not available at all. You know, homes that were selling for much less six months ago, eight months ago, or a year ago have just continually been climbing up. Yeah, I would agree. Um, matter of fact, Lawrence Young was, uh, there was a, I think it was NAR that had a uh, conference about the economic outlook. And Lawrence Young, the chief economic advisor for the National Association of Realtors, was actually asked a similar kind of question to this. And he went on to say, he said, basically, you know, we, we assumed that it was like this pent up uh, demand. And he actually made it sound like it's more of a trend, which, you know, pent up demand kind of peaks and hits a, you know, a, you know, a major plateau. point. Yeah, a plateau. And then it starts kind of going down. A trend is something that continues for a longer period of time. So he had said that it's, you know, he's looking at over the next two to three years, a, this kind of being more of the trend. So I think that's where this report is kind of reflecting on that. I think it's reflecting that, look, there's a home shortage. And then that goes back into like the home building industry, right? I mean, we see uh, the increase in prices. Yeah, well, and the, the supplies, building supplies are so much more expensive now that not as many builders are building new homes. So there's a shortage there as well. Yep, there really is. I mean, interest rates are low. I mean, there's no doubt. So obviously that makes people want to buy more. Um, then there's not enough homes for people to buy. And then the builders not having the ability to be able to acquire the goods at a price that helps them to maintain profitability. So we're going to have to see some adjustment in the market, obviously, over the next course of the year or so to see what happens. But, you know, we'll see what happens there. Um, the next one, um, the average mortgage amount reaches a record high. So I kind of thought this was interesting. Um, this was an article by The Motley Fool. Um, it's a blog that's provided, um, that provides really good financial advice if you're wanting to get into kind of stock investments. Um, but this particular uh, post was more about home prices and what effect they would have on buyers. And then this is kind of what it said. It said, Americans are borrowing more money than ever to buy homes. The average home purchase mortgage amount reached $375,000 last week, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. That's the highest number since they began their survey in 1990. They said limited housing inventory and low mortgage rates have driven home prices up and today's buyers need higher mortgages to compensate. But stretching yourself to take on a higher mortgage than you're comfortable with could have serious consequences. Yeah, uh, we, we saw that in years past where, you know, people kind of purchased homes when the market was really high and then they had difficulty and it led to foreclosures. And, yeah. It, they people really need to kind of find that information out ahead of time, talk with their mortgage person, know what their payments are going to be. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's good advice. I think, you know, a home purchase is very expensive. There's a lot of associated with it. There's a lot of upside, but it does require an education on your finances. I mean, you really got to take, yeah. take a moment and look at that and see what you can afford to do and don't just buy because you have to buy. Um, you know, I think as real estate agents, it's our duty to advise our clients correctly in that process. And yes, we want to make sales, but in the end, we're representing our, our consumer and our clients well. And so that's where I, I have the value of a realtor coming into that equation. They're, a good realtor is going to advise you correctly in that endeavor. And, you know, I think that's what really provides the value back to the real estate agent. 
Yeah, and I think you know people need to be conscious. Some of our first-time home buyers are maybe moving out of their family home, and they're not accustomed to their regular bills, utility bills, or things. If it's their first time away from their parents' house, that you know you have to take all of that into consideration. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I mean, and then even figuring in into the mortgage, you know, making making sure that you understand that the total cost involved, right? Property taxes, homeowners insurance, HOA fees, looking at all of that. And again, that's where a good real estate agent is going to come alongside you and help you with that. Yeah. So I'll add right now, guys, if you guys have any comments on any of this, what we're talking about, feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, last article before we move on to the next segment is CEOs are much more upbeat about a U.S. economy. So I thought this was good. Um, this was from marketwatch.com. Um, so it's, it's pretty good. They said that more than 40% expect business conditions to recover to pre-COVID-19 levels in 2021. The CEOs of America's biggest companies are much more upbeat about the prospects for the U.S. economy, according to a quarterly survey from the Business Roundtable released Monday. What do you think, Jane? Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of business has changed quite a bit. You know, a lot of people are seeing that their employees can work from home. You know, the environment is changing, but it seems as though those businesses are still going strong. So the, there, there is a positive outlook for that. Yeah. Uh, and I do agree. I think, you know, I think what, what's ended up happening, right? I mean, throughout 2020, all these industries got hit in a very weird way, a way they've yeah. never been hit before. And, and I know in the real estate market, we've had to make some really big adaptations, right? And so now we're looking at that across all industries. And that kind of takes time to make those adjustments. So even if 2021 still has COVID type scenarios involved, these businesses have made adaptations inside of their business and their systems and processes to help them address those problems. So I think that's where this article is kind of going. I think they've got these systems yeah. in place and that's the reflection of that, why the CEOs are pretty optimistic about the economy recovering. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's true with everything. If, if the flexibility is there and you to problem solve, you know, we, we've seen that in our own agents, you know, we've really had to change the way we do things, but we've been able to carry on and, and do really well in a different environment. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. And I have to say, I'm, I'm actually proud of each one of our agents for that. The way Me they've too. worked, it's amazing. <clears throat> and all realtors in general, I mean, we really came alongside each other and worked hard. We worked hard for our, our, our consumers and the people we serve, our offices and friends and family. You know, yeah, we are definitely and, essential. <laughs> and a lot of them, you know, that some of the things they were doing were not familiar, you know, with the Zoom meetings or the virtual tours and learning the technology. And they just rolled right with it and did really well. They really did. All right. Awesome. Well, that's the news we have for you guys today.